Hello, <clears throat> and uh, I'm Paul Murphy, and I'm here to read my book, Emily and Bill Meet Santa and Rudolph too, which, as I'm sure you gather, is a Christmas story, but I think the message holds true throughout the year. The snow was falling thick and fast on this December morn, but not one child throughout the land did feel at all forlorn because this is a special day that fact you must believe a day full of anticipation a day called Christmas Eve in a house I won't say where a young girl tells her mum I'm going out to play a while I'm in the mood for fun her mother smiles, wrap up warm, and don't forget your hat. You don't want the sniffles on Christmas Day, you can be sure of that. Emily did as she was asked, and then she ran outside to the little box in the back of the shed, where her magic carpet hides. When she knew no eyes were taking note, the carpet she unfurled and floated up into the air and away to the unicorn world. Now, can you keep a secret? Well, her best friend Bill, you see, is not a boy or girl, oh no, but a unicorn is he. They met many moons ago when Bill had gotten lost. He'd flown his carpet way too far, and alas, was paying the cost. He chanced upon young Emily, and told his tale of woe. She helped him remember his way home. You'll guess the rest, I know. They became the best of friends, and that's how they'll remain. And the reward of her own magic carpet Make sure they meet again and again. Now over the snow-cloaked trees and fields, Emily goes a-soaring. When she hears a voice cry, help, 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 in a tone that's most imploring. Emily makes the carpet stop and hover in the air. Who needs help, she calls out. Who needs help? And where? Look to your left, oh pretty girl. You see that huge great tree? If you look up in the topmost branches, that's where you'll see me. Emily flew over to the oak and looked and gasped, amazed. Tangled in its mighty arms was a reindeer looking dazed. Before another moment passed, a voice behind her called, Emily, I was just coming to see you, but why have you stalled? Well, it was Bill. He flew up close, saying I wondered why you were late. So I thought I'd set off myself and meet you at your gate. Oh, Bill, I would have been there, but as I flew along, I heard a voice call out for help, and I thought, hmm, something's wrong. I hate to stop your catching up, the reindeer politely said, but can't you see I'm stuck in this tree with a big bump on my head? Emily and Bill, they flew in close and said, well, you don't see that every day. A reindeer tangled up in leaves on top of an overturned sleigh. Are you hurt? asked Emily. No, well, only my pride. You see, this is Santa's sleigh and I took it for a joy ride. We only use it once a year and it just seems such a waste. 
So I thought I'd rev the engines up and give some clouds a chase. But oh, what woe did come to pass. You see, my driving's rather rusty. I misjudged the height of this mighty oak. Oh my, Santa never again will trust me. Goodness me, interjected Bill. That's quite something, a big dilemma. But don't you fret, it will all come right. Bill was a very positive thinking kind of fella. Are you sure that you're not hurt? Repeated Emily, concerned. I see your nose is very red. I hope it did not get burned. Oh, my nose is always red, the reindeer he replied. Why, are you a newspaper then, asked Bill, who couldn't keep his joke inside. No, but thank you for the laugh. I needed to be cheered up. But can you help me get free, please, and get this carnage all cleared up? We're already on it, said Emily. Bill, you take his left side. We'll get our carpets underneath his legs, and upwards he will glide. And while we are doing that, let's all get introduced. Okay, hello, and my name is Rudolph. Yes, that's something we deduced. This is Bill, he's my best friend, and I am Emily. Now, up you go, you magic carpets. Lift Rudolph out of this tree. The magic carpets slowly rose, with Rudolph on their nap. Suddenly, they pulled him free, with a jackdaw on his lap. They descended slowly to the ground. Poor Rudolph, he was shaken saying, I think Santa's no claims bonus has gone, unless I'm very much mistaken. Oh, I am a silly reindeer, crashing Santa's sleigh. And on Christmas Eve of all days, whatever will he say? Emily stroked Rudolph's head, which made his red nose glow. She smiled, I see why Santa lets you lead so he can see his way through the snow. Now, don't you fret, sweet Rudolph. Bill's furry sleeve holds many tricks. Some unicorny magic should free that trap sleigh quick. Are you a unicorn then? Rudolph inquisitively said. I just thought you'd had a bump. and had a strange lump on your head. Bill chuckled at the thought of it and said, no, that's my horn. I've had it there well, ever since the day that I was born. Now let me cast a magic spell and before your eyes you'll see one <clears throat> slightly dented sleigh gently coming free. Rudolph did not dare to look and put his antlers over his eyes. Rudolph, why not glance this way? I think you'll see a nice surprise. Rudolph raised his antlers up and before him on the ground. Santa's sleigh was back on land, albeit upside down. Thank you both so very much. Rudolph gratefully gushed. And will it still fly all right, he asked. Bill and Emily were hushed. I'm sorry, Rudolph, Bill softly said, but it's more broke than not. My magic can only go so far when there's parts we haven't got. Rudolph sat down in despair, saying, whatever shall I do? It's Christmas Eve. It's needed most to make millions of dreams come true. All the little boys and girls are waiting Santa's call. Because of my stupidity, 
he'll disappoint them all. Emily cuddled Rudolph tight and took his front paws in her hands. Then she said, somewhat excitedly, Guys, I have got a plan. She whispered in her friend's furry ears and their eyes lit up with glee. I think that might just work, said Bill. And Rudolph did agree. First from in the sleigh's toolbox, Rudolph retrieved a rope. He tied it to the sleigh's front bumpers, his nose bright red with hope. Then Bill shook his unicorn tail and the rope began to move and lashed itself to the magic carpets. Emily's nodding head approved. The carpets lifted into the air and with an almighty heave, the sleigh jumped up and came back down the right way up, would you believe? Phase one of the plan complete, Bill said with a chuckle, as Rudolph got in between the reins. With his seat belt safely buckled, Emily jumped onto her carpet and Bill, he leapt on his. And with the most enormous whoosh, up they all did whiz. Emily and Bill held tight as skyward they did go. Behind them, one remorseful reindeer in a sleigh marked, I'm on tow. Do you know the way then, Bill? Rudolph, he inquired. Well, when you're heading to the North Pole, only one way is required. How long does it take to get there? Emily, she asked. It's not too far, but we're running late. Can you set your carpet speed to fast? You see, not every hour is the same. In some countries, it's already night. Top speed it is then, chuckled Bill, and Rudolph held on tight. They zoomed on for what seemed an age, but wasn't long at all. If only you had a mobile phone, Rudolph. You could have given Santa a call. Turn left at that glacier, he called. And that's what they did do. Where a sign saying, welcome to the North Pole. No salesman, please, came into view. There's Santa's ranch, cried Rudolph, pointing with his hoof to a building with a thousand Christmas lights flashing on its roof. Coming down to land, said Bill, and they began to descend. I can't believe I'm at Santa's house, shrieked an excited girl to her friends. I don't think it's a welcome home, said Rudolph, adding, oh, by golly, Santa's standing on the front snow lawn, and he doesn't look too jolly. Rudolph Red, where have you been? said Santa, rather piqued. And what has happened to my sleigh? Poor Rudolph couldn't speak. Then he raised his antlered head and said, I've been naughty, I confess. Because when you know you've done something wrong, owning up is best. I wanted to ride on the skies. It's been a whole 12 months and I wanted to try a pleasure trip, not a working one for once. Oh, Santa, I am so very sorry. Look what I have done. I accidentally flew into a tree. Well, I'd hate to think you flew there for fun. Santa patted Rudolph's back and said, at least you got home safely. And this is Emily, unless I miss my guess. But, um, the horned chap's name escapes me. Why, Santa, how did you know who I was? Asked Emily, amazed. Santa smiled, I know every child on earth. 
they all fall under my gaze. And now the snow has cleared a bit. I can see your grand companion, a unicorn. Oh, they are so good. But there's a problem I had not planned on. All the gifts are ready to go. But how can they be delivered? The forest is silent in the snow. And at the prospect, they all shivered. Wait, silly me, smiled Emily. With all this excitement, I'd forgotten. Bill and I have a plan, you see, to salvage this plight, most rotten. I believe you have two lists. That's what my parents taught me. Santa nodded. Yes, that's true. And he said, that's why I'm never naughty. Well, maybe sometimes giggled Bill, thinking of all of their adventures. And where's my card, Bill? He went quiet. Emily had already sent hers. Santa, I was just wondering, could I have my present first? My, what a selfish child, said Santa thinking and when this day looked like it could not get any worse. But yes, I suppose since you are here and I can't come to you, I may as well deliver at least one present. It's the best that I can do. And you rescue my dear Rudolph, so accept my gratitude. But I must say, if this was November, I'd remember your self-centred attitude. I believe it was this doll's house you wished for Christmas morn. Uh, there's been a change of plans, smiled Bill. Emily's new list is on my horn. Bill went up to Santa's side and Santa took the note. He read it and his face grew the hugest grin. This is the best letter that you wrote. What does it say? asked Rudolph, full of curiosity. It says, Santa, can I change my wish to a new sleigh, if you please? Santa said, you sweet, sweet girl. Now I see your plan. I can't make a new sleigh for myself in time. But if it's a child's gift, I can. Santa rushed off to his workshop and boomed, elves, stop the press. A special girl needs a special sleigh. They said, it's a rush job then, we guess. Santa gave a great big laugh and the elves turned to their task. Do you have a blueprint? The foreman elf of Emily asked. One just like Santa's, if you please, Emily directed. Maybe with extra bumpers, Rudolph added. Yes, that's what we expected. And in no time at all, the elf's work was complete. And before them all was a shiny new sleigh with a special unicorn seat. Thank you, Santa, it is perfect, Emily said with joy. But do you know what? It's rather big. It's not my usual kind of toy. And so I was wondering, as it's so large, you see, Santa, would you please accept this sleigh as a present? from me. Santa smiled knowingly. He'd seen through Emily's plan. But before he could answer, Rudolph leapt in. Well, if he won't, I can. Everybody started laughing and the elves rolled in the snow. Then Santa called, let's load up then. It's time for us to go. The elves began to clear their shelves and quickly put all the presents in sacks. 
while Rudolph got the other reindeer ready and put Christmas lights on their backs. Soon the sleigh was full of gifts and ready to depart. Santa turned to Emily and said, I have a special place for you in my heart. Thanks to you, no child will be upset this Christmas day. And the reindeer and the elves did cheer. Hip, 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 hooray! Santa put the sleigh in gear and said, My dears, it's time to go. And away into the skies they went with an echoed ho, ho, ho. Well, that's it, said the foreman elf. Now we can have a rest. It's been a long year, that's for sure. But still, this job's the best. The elves waved goodbye to their new friends and went to get their tea. They've got to start making toys again in just two days from now, you see. And their snow-caked magic carpets Bill and Emily did mount. How many adventures is that now, Bill? Oh, Emily, too many to count. Off they flew back to their homes. It had been a long, long day. Where have you been? Their mothers asked. Oh, we'd rather not say. Are you keeping secrets? No, keeping a surprise. Let's see what tomorrow brings, along with its sunrise. And in the morning, well, guess what? There beneath Emily's Christmas tree was the biggest doll's house that ever did she see. Oh, Emily, it is wonderful, her mum and dad exclaimed. I must have been on the good list this year, Emily knowingly explained. Meanwhile, in the unicorn land, a present was by Bill's bed. He opened it up, and there inside, a horn-shaped hat for his head. And both their parent presents had a note, and do you know what it did say? To the wonderful girl and unicorn, who saved Christmas Day. So... When you awake on Christmas Day, and lovely gifts you see, thank Santa by being good next year, and thank Bill and Emily. The end. Pete adds, Merry Christmas. Thank you so much for your time in listening to this story of Emily and Bill meet Santa and Rudolph, and uh, this beautiful, beautiful, beautiful girl in the back is Emily. And the wonderful picture, which I'm just about to show in close up as I close down, was drawn by her brother, my wonderful son Dylan. It's called Blue Christmas. Thank you for your time. Merry Christmas. <laughs>